Yes, crossbow speed is important. There, I said it. You heard it from me. Wow, have times changed. Crossbow speed has been an increasingly important topic with me, at least, here on Death by Bungie over the past couple of years. You have seen an evolution in me where a couple of years ago I started getting a little more serious about upgrading Bungie to a more modern crossbow, one that shot at more modern speeds. And then last year was kind of the straw that broke the camel's back when I borrowed Bungie Jr. from my daughter Genevieve when we were on our Maryland hunt and I was able to shoot a deer at 40 yards, really without too much trouble, without too much hesitation. I felt very confident with that shot in part because of the speed of that more modern crossbow, 350 feet per second or so. And the size of that crossbow in comparison to my larger, older bungee was a benefit as well. Now, I did a previous video on this topic where I suggested that speed wasn't that important. And I'm going to tell you right now, don't go watch that video. <laughs> you can go watch that video if you want. There's a lot of good stuff in there. It's certainly a good topic of conversation. There's lots of good information in there. What I was really discussing in that older video was maximum effective range for crossbow hunters. The concept of jumping the string, that's a big topic among deer hunters now, isn't it? And it certainly is. It certainly was a topic in that older video. That was one of the things that I was discussing. Back then, with the original Bungie, the OB, we were shooting around 300 feet per second or so. I used to joke that that was how fast that crossbow shot on a good day downhill <laughs> with the wind at your back. <laughs> Even though shooting downhill actually doesn't speed the crossbow up any. But you get the point. 300 feet per second, 305 or so was essentially the fastest you're going to shoot with that crossbow. Certain considerations come into play when you're shooting at those speeds. And I think it's time to update my research. I think it's time to update this topic, this video series, with a more modern discussion of more modern crossbow speeds. This is particularly valuable, I think, this discussion, this video that we're going to have here, because now we've got the Raven R500 announced, if it ever comes out, I don't know, at the time of the shooting of this video, it has not actually been released to the public, but it is nonetheless slated for release in August of 2021. To me, that's a milestone, because this is the first time not only that crossbows reach that 500 feet per second threshold, but this is the first time that archery equipment across the board has reached, at least theoretically, this very big milestone of 500 feet per second. Can you believe that? Now, I'm just joking. You can go back and watch my previous video if you want to. There is some good stuff in there. One of the things that I mentioned in that previous video was the fact that at that time, I was aware of some research that was being done by Growing Deer TV. Dr. Grant Woods was releasing a video where he was going to show some research and show some evidence about jumping the string. And his conclusions were essentially that 30 yards was the max maximum shot he was going to be taking on deer. His video, however, had not actually been released yet. I was aware of the content, the substance of that video, only because I had heard him interviewed in a podcast. I'm going to try and leave links in the description to both his video, which you should definitely watch, and that podcast episode, if I can find it. It's several years old. Those are things that you might want to go check out so you have the whole story on this topic. I agreed with Dr. Grant Woods back at that time because I was shooting around 300 feet per second with the OB, with the, the original bungee. 300 feet per second, a 30-yard shot, that made sense to me, and it was consistent with my success and failures over the years hunting with that crossbow. With that older, slower crossbow, I had had spine shots on deer, deer jumping the string, ducking a little bit before the arrow arrived at their location. And that had been a problem, a consistent problem for me, shooting that crossbow over and over again. I had plenty of success with that crossbow, certainly not suggesting that you can't be successful with that equipment because I was. Bungie and I had a lot of great success in the woods. You might recall even my buck last year, my Pennsylvania buck, that was a 20-yard shot on a very nice buck. And even that buck ducked a little bit before that arrow got there. 
Nonetheless, that video from Dr. Grant Woods, that really stuck with me over time. I kept thinking about that video and going back. One of the things I kept thinking about was the fact that he didn't test these modern crossbows that I've been looking at in order to upgrade my crossbow, in order to upgrade Bungie this year. He didn't use more modern crossbows shooting at more modern speeds. So I began to think, how can we figure out how these more modern crossbows would do in this test? I reached out to Darren Cummings, who developed that technology. I had a chance to speak with him months ago on Zoom. He has a channel here on YouTube, Hunting Science Explained. You should go check that out if you haven't already. I had to bring in my climber, my old climber stand. I actually was anxiously awaiting that video when it came out, before it came out, because I'd heard Dr. Grant Woods talk about it in a podcast, and he was explaining what the plan was, and then he saw the video, and you're like kind of a, an important figure for me, if that makes any sense, because you played a role in that video, you know what I mean? And it's like, it's, so it's a big deal to me to have a chance to talk, yeah. I really do appreciate that. If you want to hear the entire interview, pretty much unedited interview with Darren Cummings, check out Talking with Bungie, my podcast. Check that out on deathbybungie.com or any podcast app that you happen to use. Check it out on there and you can hear that entire interview. Uh, my name is Darren Cummings. I'm from Northwestern Pennsylvania. I think you're from Pennsylvania too. My uh, educational background, I'm a mechanical engineer. I studied at Penn State in Erie, uh, the Barron College they call it. But what I do now is I create the tools uh, and a lot of the processes and, and a bunch of software. That's kind of where the, the background of knowing how to do this sort of uh, mechanical troubleshooting that I helped Dr. Grant Woods with. I started hunting officially when I was 12. And so I've been doing that for 22 years. Uh, and I shot my first buck with a bow. It was on my first gear with a bow when I was 14. For, for me, archery is is really the, the, the season I enjoy the most. I mean, uh, well, I guess flintlock as well. Flintlock's really fun. Uh, but rifle season is kind of like, I'll, I'll hunt it if I haven't got a buck yet with, the bow, with my bow. My, my background is mostly in uh, compound bows. But it is very similar crossbows to, to regular bows. There are some differences, the, the draw weight, the weight of the arrows, but most of the physics we're going to talk about, it applies uh, pretty well one to the other. So uh, with Grant Woods, uh, he, he was kind of uh, one of the first people I, I saw on YouTube or anywhere really that noticed this phenomena of deer dropping when, when the shot would be released. Uh, so... Uh, if, if you look, uh, a, a lot of the old hunting footage was with rifles. There was some bow hunting, uh, but it wasn't until YouTube and pretty much everybody has a camera on them now uh, right. that we could really get enough footage to start to realize like, oh man, there's, there's really something going on here. When, the, when we're shooting a deer with a bow, they're not just standing there nice like a target. Now, I'm aware that there are some people out there who suggest that deer are not alerted by the sound of the bow going off or anything like that, that instead they are reacting not to jumping the string, the string of the bow, but jumping because of the arrow. They hear the arrow coming at them. I suspect that people who hold that belief have not shot bungee. <laughs> if you've shot a crossbow, most crossbows are so loud they are in a different sort of category when it comes to volume from compound bows or traditional archery. I don't know. Are deer not alarmed when they hear a compound bow going off? That that thunk the, of the bow is what triggers that deer to start to drop. Uh, so I don't think it's any different than if you clapped your hands or, or any sort of event that just happened once and then didn't have anything that follows. Uh, I do, however, think that the, the buzzing of that arrow uh, continues to give them uh, information about where the threat is coming from. And if you've ever watched some of these videos where these deer get shot at like 50 yards, uh, anything like that, you'll, you'll see they start to, to drop and then they turn and start to move away from the sound. And I think that that, that happens only because that arrow is still buzzing at them. And if you've ever heard the sound of, uh, you know, just record an uh, arrow or a bolt flying towards a target, uh, it, it's it's kind of a, an odd sound to hear that thunk and then the the hissing sound as it gets closer and closer. So I I, I do believe that the the arrow whizzing through the air is 
causing them uh, to turn away. I don't know if it's causing them to drop any more uh, than they would already with just that thunk noise, but it, I, I think there is definitely some impact there. Probably the sound of our crossbows is more likely to alert deer than the sound of those arrows. I'm betting you agree with me. Especially like with a crossbow, they're pretty loud. <laughs> if that's the case, continue to watch because again, we're talking about jumping the string. Grant observed that. He kind of put out the call on one of his videos uh, asking if anybody could help kind of uh, make this scientific, if you will. With my job, what I, uh, a lot of what I do is kind of messing with what we would call kind of embedded devices, basically just a, a little computer. You can put some inputs into it and it can send some outputs out. I was feeding in a microphone input and uh, it would kind of track the volume. And uh, if it saw a quick spike in the volume, it would trip the software to say, hey, I think a bow just released an arrow. So that, that's kind of how I w could cue off of uh, you know, the way a deer would, because a deer is going to do the same thing, right? It's constantly monitoring the, the sounds around it. And if all of a sudden a quick spike happens and it hears something, it's going to, it's going to do that response that we've seen on camera. Really what we're talking about here, I think, is the concept of neuro filtering, neuro filtering, the brain in an animal, a wild animal, they're out there in the wild environment all the time. Their brain is constantly evaluating all of the sounds around them and the sound of a tree branch breaking or a bird chirping or a bird alarmed off in the distance. All of those various sounds are filtered out. The neural filtering filters those out so the deer is not thinking about them constantly. Now, other sounds like a crossbow going off, that's the kind of sound that neural filtering lets through, lets go to the deer's brain so the deer can say, hey, I need to do something. I need to do it now because something is happening. That's neural filtering. So the, the machine picks that up and then we had an extension cord that would run from it to where the target was at. Uh, on the target was an electromagnetic, so uh, electromagnet and uh, with a piece of metal and a string holding a balloon, the balloon was filled with water. So the idea was uh, the, the way it would work, it would pick up that sound. And because we knew the distance of how far that sound had to travel and the speed of sound is constant for the most part, you know, it, it varies a little bit with altitude and air density, but it's pretty standard. We made the sound, the sound traveled to the deer. The deer can't instantly react. The brain takes a, a you know, not very long. It's pretty amazing, but it, it takes a little bit before it can uh, hear that sound and send signals to the muscles to do something. So the, the time we used for that was the time that an Olympic sprinter takes to react to the starting gun. So uh, in the Olympics, actually, if, if they fire the starting gun and someone leaves perfectly on time with it, it'll still be considered a false start. And the, the reason is they've studied it. They know that the brain takes a certain amount of time from the time that hears that you know, sound to the time that they can actually launch out of the uh, start. So we had that time. So now we've, we've said uh, the bow's gone off. We heard it. It took this amount of time for the sound to reach the, tar the target, which would be a deer if you're shooting at it. We had another tenth of a second so that, you know, that, that time it takes to start for the deer to start reacting and then we would uh, shut the magnet off and the balloon would start to drop. It's not just a question of how fast that arrow gets to the deer. It's also and how much time is involved, but it's also a question of how long it takes for the deer to physically start to react. The one thing that we talked about on there uh, that, because uh, I think people will be, could be confused by it, is that balloon dropping. How does that simulate a deer dropping? Is it the same? Uh, so what Grant explained, but I'll, I'll explain here again, is that uh, the deer don't have any way to grab onto the ground and pull themselves down. So all they can do is basically release their muscle tension and just start to fall towards the ground. And what they're actually trying to do is they want their front to fall towards, you know, so the front fall down and their back drop a little bit. And then that kind of gets them in that sprinter position where they can push off their hind legs and really take off. So that's what they're trying to do. So that's why this device is important. It mimics gravity. It mimics a deer. It mimics the way that that deer uses gravity to get away from the sound of that bow going off. 
they can't go any faster than gravity lets them. And the reason for that is just because they can't pull themselves towards the ground. They can only drop. So the balloon, we, uh, we tracked it versus uh, some videos of deer dropping. And while, I mean, it's not completely perfect, it's a pretty good approximation. Now, I bet right now there's somebody out there watching this saying, hey, deer don't just react by dropping. They don't just duck the string. They don't just drop. They also run off. They also roll. They turn. They twist. And they do all sorts of different gymnastics trying to get away from that sound, whatever sound it happens to be. That's true, but understand, and I think you'll agree, in this modern era where we have cameras, where I have recorded shot after shot after shot, dozens of shots on deer I have recorded on my hard drive. And you probably have lots of videos of that of your own, or you have seen plenty of them. The dropping of the deer, the gravity, the use of gravity is always the first part of their reaction. They drop and then, then they roll. They drop and then they leap forward. All of the extra part of that reaction is something that takes place after they drop, after they duck the string. The ducking of the string, the jumping of the string is the first reaction that we see time and time again. For crossbow hunters, when we're hunting at 300 feet per second plus, I suspect it's more important to us that initial drop, that initial reaction is more important to us than what happens after that. And I say that because usually when you're shooting 300 feet per second or 400 feet per second, or now perhaps even 500 feet per second this fall during the crossbow seasons heading into the woods, people shooting at those speeds are less likely to experience that rolling effect, that effect that takes place after the ducking, because those faster arrows are probably already there, right? They may have dropped and we hit the shoulder blade. That can happen. It's happened to me, that's for sure. And that's really what we're talking about in this video. So keep watching. But I think that the initial part of that reaction is most important to crossbow hunters. The rolling that takes place after that dropping after the ducking of the string, okay, after the deer drops, the next movement of that deer probably affects compound bow hunters who are shooting at speeds below 300 feet per second. Probably, if I'm right, I suspect that it also affects traditional archers even more. I'm a crossbow hunter. I really don't care what the deer do after the arrow gets there. They can roll and twist and turn all they want. We added the water so that, uh, you know, with a, a regular balloon, because it's so light and it's so big, you get a lot of air resistance, which we'll talk about when we start to talk about, you know, arrows and bolts traveling through the air. Uh, but with the balloon, with the water in it, it's heavy enough compared to the, the amount of uh, surface area of that balloon that it would fall uh, pretty quickly. So, so uh, th this was looking at uh, the footage we had and taking some values. So uh, Grant was, I believe it was Grant, he was shooting the slowest bow there. It was shooting at 258 feet per second. And if you've seen some of Grant's uh, hunts, I think he's he's had a couple uh, early on where he was shooting, I want to say even 30 yards. And he had one where he shot at a doe around 30 yards and that doe completely dropped out of the way from what should have been a kill shot. And it, it's pretty cool because, you know, they actually put the overlay of where the deer was and then show you what drop. And, and the reason for that is just the, the speed of his bow is 258 feet per second. Um, I would consider that slow. Uh, I think just about every crossbow hunter is going to consider that to be slow. Uh, there's some guys now that that's probably right in their wheelhouse. And uh, so what we're looking at, let's take his bow, for example, and we're at 20 yards. Uh, that balloon, that is, so it's based on the balloon, it dropped about two and a half inches from the time he released to the time that arrow impacted. It, it dropped about two and a half inches. So we tried to fill the balloons to a size that was approximately, you know, the, the kill size of a, of a deer. It's not a, you know, balloon's not a perfect, it, it's a good approximation. So basically at 20 yards, he would have been able to kill that deer. Now at 30 yards, six inches is how far that balloon dropped. The assumption is that's about how far that deer would drop as well. And if you watch the footage, sure enough, that is, you know, exactly what you saw with that shot I just described over that doe's back. What does that 10 plus mean? And then at 40 yards, basically what we were saying is that we, we couldn't measure it because the drop from the balloon to the ground, it had already hit the ground. Yeah, and these are a lot of the, the shots that happen that we see where people hit like right above the spine 
they kind of call it that no man's land, but I think Grant actually even did a, a video on this. There, there's no area between the lungs and the spine, but there is this really huge area, I shouldn't say, a good sized area from above the spine to the top of the hair. So a lot of people hit there, you put a big gash in it, and there, there's nothing there that's gonna kill it, so. Now you'll notice that bungee at 305 feet per second on a good day, bungee's really close to that 308 feet per second bow. And you'll notice that at 40 yards, neither one of them is hitting the vitals of that deer. Neither one of them is hitting that balloon. Yeah, so the thing that is kind of, uh, we need to remember here, and if you go back to your high school physics days, uh, is when something falls, it accelerates. When gravity, uh, gra gravity accelerates something. So it's not a constant velocity. It gets, you know, faster and faster. Uh, and faster. So if if you take uh, one second, it the uh, it might fall 16 inches, and then in the next second, it, it's squared. So it wouldn't be a you wouldn't you know you wouldn't have fallen 32 feet in two seconds. You would have fallen like 128 or something. So deer slowly react. They slowly react, and then they gradually increase the speed of that reaction. Again, they are dropping to the ground. They are using gravity to their advantage. When you're looking at this, you might say, you know, that, that second bow, it's barely any faster than the first bow, yet we're saying that we saw almost no drop by the time the balloon was hit. And it's just because uh, gravity, as I said, it's, it's squared. So it, it's not a perfect linear relationship. You're not going to see it go from uh, two and a half, and then the next one will be one and three quarter, and then the last one will be uh, zero. So at, at 20 yards, 276 feet per second, you're, you're not going to have any trouble, right? You're going to hit that deer exactly where you were aiming. Uh, you get out to 30 yards, and here's the interesting thing. You're still at about the same thing as Grant's bow was at 258 at 20 yards. So you've shot 10 yards further, and you've still got about the same amount of drop. So that, that one had only dropped two and a, a quarter. Uh, but then you add 10 more yards, and again, this, this, uh, this uh, gravity being a squared starts to kick in. And what you'll see is that, again, it's the same thing. It's over 10 inches. So you added 10 yards. You would expect that you might see 5 inches here. No, you're going to see probably over a foot, which you know, anything over 10 inches, we've kind of said, at that point, you're not going to kill that deer unless you got lucky. Now let's talk about the results. Dr. Grant Wood's video suggests you shouldn't take a shot beyond 30 yards. I kind of came up with this, this rule that, you know, it's, it's a rule of thumb, right? We're, we're not, nothing is, can ever be perfect. Uh, but basically the, the way that uh, I looked at it is if you can hit within, or if it drops less than four inches in the time it takes for your arrow to impact it, and you aim right about at the heart, you're going to hit the, at least hit the lungs. So uh, the, the rule of thumb that I came up with just to keep it simple, because I didn't want a, a huge table for everything, is take your, your bow speed and its feet per second and divide that by 10. That's about how many yards you'll be able to shoot and the amount of time it would take that deer to drop four, about four inches. Uh, what you'll see is that works out pretty perfectly for Grant's bow. Uh, now for the second bow, you, it looks a little odd because you would expect that uh, at 30 yards then, that 276 bow, should be hitting right around four inches. It's hitting at two and a, a quarter. Uh, and and it, it's hard to say exactly where that discrepancy comes in. Uh, but then if you look at the next one, it's pretty much what you'd expect, right? At 30 yards, 300 feet per second, he's got a couple inches of drop. He, he might be able to go a couple more yards and, and still hit within that four inches, but you add just 10 more yards and uh, it's, it's five, six inches, somewhere in that range. But as a crossbow is faster, do we want to revisit that? When we were doing this, we, we Grant's bow was kind of, you know, that's a slow end of most bows today. Uh, we wanted the, the top end. So what we did for the top end was we, we got, uh, at the time, this was two years ago, so today this is pretty common, but at the time, I think Raven, I believe it was Raven. Raven? <laughs> now you got my attention. They were one of the only crossbows that was shooting 400 feet per second plus. So we, we, we got them to send us one of their uh, products and uh, it was, we, we put it through the, the chronograph. It was shooting, I think, 413 feet per second, which I just remember at that time I was blown away by that. It was just amazing. Uh, so we did shoot that bow 
And uh, basically at 40 yards, uh, that thing, the, the balloon was barely dropping. Come again? At 40 yards, the balloon was barely dropping. What's that? We tested the, the Raven, the crossbow, and uh, it was shooting 413 feet per second. And at 40 yards, it was barely dropping. I'm, I'm confident we would have moved to 50 and it would have still hit that balloon with no issues. At 50 yards, that crossbow still hits the lungs if you aim at the heart. The higher the speed you get, and again, it just all comes down to the fact that the amount of time that arrow is in or the bolt is in the air decreases the faster it is. So it drops less because gravity has less time to affect it. And the deer has less time to react to it and less time to drop out of its way or to turn or do all the things that deer seem to do to us. Now, I am not saying go out there and take a whole bunch of long shots at deer. I'm not saying that at all. But I am saying that this idea that 30 yards is a long shot and anything farther than that is too long doesn't necessarily apply anymore in the world of modern crossbow speeds. I kind of knew that after our success with Bungie Jr. in Maryland. I want to thank Darren Cummings for joining me on Death by Bungie. He was very gracious not only to respond to my Facebook request, but also to join me and take some of his time to share this information with you. And I hope you have appreciated it as much as I have. And I know you do because you're a friend of Bungie. Thank you very much for tuning in. And until next time... All hail Bungie!